much Jordan Swingle with Let's Just Be Real. In a world where we can put a spin and a filter on everything, this podcast is going to be raw and honest about all the things. And I do mean all the things. So let's get to it. All the things that I would get in trouble for are making me successful today. Abercrombie and Fitch, how was I wearing that? But she's a bomb realtor. Oh, do I still fighting for a living? I retired. I'll put the gloves up. <laughs> well, hi, y'all. I'm so pumped for you to be here. Uh, disclaimer, this is going to be a quick moving episode, okay? Because this guest talks fast. She's got a lot to say and you have a lot to listen to. And I'm so excited for this episode in particular because this is somebody that is uh, a kindred spirit, I think. We could talk about anything and everything and we're going to do that today. So I have with me Diana Flores, who is uh, a mom of four. She's a bomb realtor. She works on our team and she is a close friend of mine and I'm so excited to grill her, ask her all the questions and just, you know, get real about all the stuff that we're going to talk about. So how are you feeling? Nervous now. So much pressure. <laughs> you don't have to lean into the mic. I don't. Because <laughs> <laughs> I just sit here and it. Yeah, we're just going to okay. talk. Yeah, we're going to talk. I love okay. that you immediately went. This is me. I know. I don't I don't know how to do stuff like this. I know. <laughs> That's why I'm here. Um, but now I feel good. Like I said, a lot of pressure. So hopefully I make this podcast exciting and yeah. Tune in. I mean, the story of your life is exciting enough. So I think that that will come naturally. Mm-hmm. So, okay. First of all, when I started this podcast, when I like told you about it, mm-hmm. you were so pumped, like probably more so than anyone else. Really? Okay, we're going to talk about this. We're going to da 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 Like know. you immediately came up with all these ideas for me, which I appreciated. But I also thought you you kind of were like, oh, okay, we're doing this together. So when I started writing out my names of people who I wanted on it, I was like, oh, number one has to be Diana. Like I'm Diana saying, has yeah. to be here. And here I am nervous. Now I'm like clamming up. Don't what do, do I say? Be your own self. Okay. okay. Look, the podcast name is Let's Just Be Real for a reason. So, mm-hmm. okay. So we have talked to a couple of different people at this point and asked questions about motherhood. We've asked questions about, um, you know, where you come from, because I think it's important to start there because it gives people like a foundation of understanding of who you are. Right. And everybody on our team knows who you are. You're well known in your community, but I want you to take us back to how did we get the Diana that we have today? The trenches. Yeah, baby. Mm-hmm. Let's okay. go all the way back to that. So First of all, where were you born? Where are you from? You know, give me give me like a glimpse into your childhood. So I'm from Diamond Hill area, um, north side area, kind of like stockyards, but north side of Diamond Hill is kind of like saying you're from Dallas when you're from Fort Worth. Right, so. right, right. Um, but I, my family grew up in Diamond Hill. Well, we lived in Diamond Hill, um, but my cousins all grew up in north side. So I was in a mixture of both. So that's why I'm very hood. Like <laughs> I was in both hoods. Um, went to school in north side, um, but still lived in Diamond Hill. So around a lot of activity that's mm-hmm. you know um Sketchy. so yeah so seen a lot heard a lot did a lot um but I mean it made me who I am I mean yeah. very fearless I mean at this point it's like you can't do anything to me or show me anything that I haven't seen right been there done that nothing so, shocks you. exactly but not only that it, it made me into a person to where I'm very open and I don't judge anybody for anything like no matter where you come from your background Whatever it is, I'm like, girl, there's no need to be ashamed because mm-hmm. I can guarantee you I know somebody or I've done it. So, yeah, I love um, that. And that's why I think you make such a good friend and realtor because you can talk to anyone and anyone feels like they can really just bear their soul mm-hmm. to you. And you're like, oh, yeah, let's like let's get into it. Like you live for the tea and you're also just a good sounding board. Like I feel yes. like you anytime I've had any issues or anything that I like just needed to vent like. You'll be like, oh, yeah, like you're always in my corner. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, girl. Yeah, same. Like all the things. And I love that about you. But I know that your upbringing also wasn't the easiest. Mm-hmm. Right. So talk about you got pregnant at a very young age when yes. your first daughter. Yes. So I won't say that I know people have a worse. Everybody has a sad story. So I'm not going to say that I grew up where my parents weren't involved and we were just dead broke yeah, and no. we struggled. No, but I also didn't have a silver spoon either. My mom was a single mom, uh, raised five of us. And however she did it, I don't Wait, know. Wait, I didn't realize there was five of you. There's five of us. I have my two, my, well, it's four with my mom and dad. So I have okay. um, two sisters. And then my other brother and then my younger brother. Okay. Um, Five including you. That's what I'm Including, yeah. yes. Um, but I also have siblings from my dad as well. So, but for my mom, she raised five of us. Wow. Um, so, like I said, however she did it, I don't know. You survived. Of God. Yes. Yeah. Um, but I will say that even though my mom did struggle and she did raise a lot of us, 
she never would she never look like she struggled like she if she was on government assistance i would have never known if she had food stamps if she had i would have ne- i don't know to this day i still had nice things i still had nice clothes um and she would go broke just to make sure that we were good so that set me to where my expectations for myself were high i mm-hmm. wanted a lot of stuff for myself because my mom constantly did that she put me she in was able to yes. for you yes and even though she probably wasn't somehow she made it able and it's crazy to me because shout like, out to them single moms yeah they've been putting the world on their I'm back like abercrombie and fitch how was i wearing that like yeah. i don't know how she did that but shoes everything so um and i'm telling you there's no way that she I don't know I don't know how she did it um but she did work two jobs and so like I said I didn't come from a pair a a household where I didn't have support or my parents were just not there that's not the case right um I just came from seeing somebody who's going to make it happen no matter what and I think that's where I got it from I didn't it wasn't the hunger that not being able to eat or not being or being without but you did grow around grow up around people who were in that situation yes and And you saw that side of it too exactly and my mom did too so Mm -hmm. I have family that's in that side and my mom stepped away and separated herself from like a lot of I was different I was raised different the way my cousins were yeah the way the rest of some of my friends were we were just raised differently but also seeing it, I was kind of still around it. And half of me was, OK, I know what's the right thing to do. I know what my mom wants me to do. Yeah. But look what my cousins are doing. I'm curious to what they're doing. So that's what put me in the situation being from the hood, mm-hmm. living around my friends are all doing this. You know, and my mom is just that one person who was trying to keep me away oh, yeah, from in it. the mud. Yeah. Yes. And she's just a diamond in the rough that was like, OK, we're in the hood, but we're not them. Yeah. And I, for whatever reason, was intrigued by it. I would like, oh, that looks cool. That was yeah. this. So I would get around bad crowds. Um, like I said, my family was around a lot of stuff. Um, so, I mean, just by nature, just being who I was related to, being just there, we just got in a lot of fights, a lot of ghetto activity. Like, you used to meet people down at the corner store. I would tell you, oh, Diana's <laughs> still fighting for a living? I retired. No, I put the gloves up. up. I put the gloves up. <laughs> So, yeah, no, I, um, yeah, I mean, I, it's, it, I've came a long way and yeah. even just the way I see things, the way I view life, I used to live. So not but caring. part of that was, okay, there's a story you told me very early on in our friendship that I want you to share about yes. you getting pregnant at 15 or 16, 15, 15, mm-hmm. which do you think back on that and be like, oh my God. Yes. Like, Cause I have a 13 year old daughter. That's wild. And I'm like, how? Yeah. How? And she like to look at Aaliyah and think exactly. like, oh my God, it's crazy. But so you get pregnant at 15. You still to this day are someone that will make something out of nothing. Like you will find a way. Okay. And like you said, it wasn't from the hunger. It was from watching your mom make a way. Yeah. Make a way mm-hmm. where there wasn't one. Right. Mm-hmm. So getting pregnant at that age, how difficult was that to manage? It was hard. I mean, I was still in school, obviously. Um, So I still had I was still going to schools in high school. Um, We had an actual class, which is kind of, again, going back to the area that we're from. It's so common. So Mm -hmm. at the time, it's like, oh, just another pregnant teenager, like another girl on the streets. that got pregnant, another Mexican girl that got pregnant. So it was nothing Mm -hmm. like shocking to the point to where in our school, we had a whole class designated for us, for us pregnant women. They would get us set up on Medicaid, food stamps, all that stuff. Wow. How to teach us how to cook. Like, just know how to be a woman, pretty much. And her, our teacher was Miss Cook. And she would just teach us everything we needed to do, teach us, uh, teach us how to change diapers, bottle feeding, resources, all this stuff. Wow. Because it was so common, you know. So it was our last period. And we loved it. So there was a lot of us girls who kind of supported one another. We would compare due dates and Oh, what are you having? You know, we invite each other to baby showers, things like that. So the support was there when I came to school. Um, Part of me wants to cry hearing that because of how sad it is that it's so prevalent. Mm -hmm. But the other part of me is like, wow, props to that school for For like stepping up and and teaching some of these girls things that maybe they weren't going to be taught at home. And for sure. And I do give our school that our school being Northside. Um, it being a hood school, like, I'm glad that they had that for us. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, it was hard. But the fact that we had those resources and we had the teachers and I was always that kid that like the teachers knew that I was going to be better than what I was, where they knew like, Diana, they where are you acting like that? Yes. Yeah. And they would tell me every day, like, you're smart. You don't need to do these things. You need they, every single day I would show up for tests and just do them. And I hated doing tests. And passed them. So they were like, you can do it. You just choose not to. Mm. And so I had these teachers who believed in me. And as much as I kind of turned my shoulder to them, it stuck. Yeah. So the fact that I had them, I feel like it made it easier. But having Aaliyah at such a young age, I went into like hustle mode. Like, 
you, anybody who sees this podcast, they will tell you I was in Northside selling candy with this big old Victoria's Secret bag. I had like hot Cheetos in one bag and I had I used to get the pack from Sam's, the 30 count, sell them for two dollars each. And it would take me it would cost me like twenty nine bucks to get them. And they had 30. So I'd be making sixty dollars. It was thirty dollars profit, whatever. But at 15, not having nothing, I couldn't get a job because I wasn't 16 yet. So that was my way of making money. And I was and at that point, had you dropped out of school? And I would go to school just to sell candy. So I wouldn't even... You wouldn't go to your classes. No, at you all. I'd go to go all three lunches. Courtyard. All three lunches. I would show up to every single lunch. And and the admins and stuff would just let you in. Some of the lunch people... Well, it, in Northside, it's kind of weird. You can just walk on campus and get off campus. I don't know if it's like that now. Uh, hopefully this it's not that, that now. now. Yeah, yeah, let but, us know in the comments if your child goes Northside. I hope no, I, I doubt, doubt it. it. And if, they, if it, it... Well, I will say... Northside did what they had to do, but kids are going to do what they're going to do. Of course. No matter what. So I I figured out a way to get in there regardless. So (laughs) I'm like, I'm going to make my money. I can't make no money either way. I had a master set. I had my... She figured it out. Well, not only that, I had... I was like, I like this stroller and car seat that I'm going to get Aaliyah was the the combined. I was like, okay, it's going to be cheaper if I buy them combined. I have the one I wanted and I know how much I needed to make. So I went every single day and I would sell about three boxes a day, hot Cheetos. And and maybe people felt bad for me because I was like, 10 months pregnant, you know, looking like yeah. an elephant. They're like, just give her what she wants, <laughs> you know. So I was just selling candy left and right. I had one teacher who did say something and she told me, she's like, um, she had asked me, she's like, are you going to just sell candy for the rest of your life? And I'm like, you're like, little do you know? Well, I I mean, I snapped back and I was like, who are you to talk? Are you going to be on Northside the rest of your life? Because she actually went to Northside and they came back to be a substitute teacher. But we had a teacher gone for a while. Like, so girl, she, I'm making more selling yes, hot Cheetos than you're making an hour. Don't yeah. do that to me. You know, whatever. But so they would get on my butt all the time when I was in class and I'm trying to like sneak it. Like, are you sure? Write them notes. It's a dollar or whatever it was, you know, that I'm selling. But I would make my money. I would make my money and I would go and go so buy what I needed. So did you get the stroller from selling yeah, candy it. bars? Mm-hmm. I got my stroller. So and you my... sold candy bars and hot Cheetos to afford to buy a stroller, a stroller and, a and a car seat. Yes. It was a green polka dot stroller. Ugly thing that I look back <laughs> now. But and you're like, at yeah. the time, I'm like, yeah, I did that. You know, uh-huh. I got my daughter this. You know, I'm thinking I'm grown and I got it all handled. Uh, to me, I was like, nobody's going to tell me that I can't do this. Like, I was a stereotype already, pregnant, young Mexican girl. Like, I'm just already a stereotype. But mm-hmm. I was trying to avoid the failing part. And mm-hmm. I figured that I was going to drop out of school. Like, I kind of figured that I was more focused on making money that I wasn't going to finish school. Like, I seriously thought school was slowing me down. Like, I really was like... Which it kind of it did. Kind it kind of did. And I hate yeah. to say that. And I hate to be that person. And I don't tell children, like, don't go to school. I'm not saying that. No, but I think we talk about that with college. Like, I felt that way about me going to college. I was there for the social aspect. Did I learn a couple of things? Sure. But, like... I wasted thousands of dollars on, and I didn't even finish my degree, mm-hmm. going when I wish that someone would have sat me down and said, here's what you're good at. Here are some options in a career that you can go through. Like, why not push me that route instead of saying, okay, you graduate high school and then you go to college, period. Not everyone is cut out for that. Exactly. Like, that brought me more, that delayed me. If I had started being a realtor at 19, that's what I said. baby, I'd be a billionaire. That's like, what I said. It's for real. So I think that it's, Obviously, I feel like we hope that every kid graduates high school and that's not something you don't wish for someone to have to claw their way to the top. Mm-hmm. But I think that it's fair to say, like, when you have a certain mentality and you have a certain gift and a certain skill set, like you either need to teach those kids how to hone that skill set while they're in that class or like understand when they're like, this isn't challenging me. I'm going to go find a way to do exactly. that. You know, and that's what you did. That's exactly what I did. And it's such an unpopular opinion. Anytime I talk about it, people get uncomfortable. People are like, what are you saying? And I'm like, I'm not saying what you do is a bad idea. I'm not saying you should have it never wasn't went to meant for you. It wasn't meant for me. Yeah. I'm just not that person to sit down every single day to focus on a degree to take me somewhere that I know without I can get. I can get to the same mm-hmm. place that you're going to get without it. Not everybody can do that. And that's not to say, oh, I'm better than you. I'm just, I'm just, I know what my skills are and I know what my weaknesses are. Mm-hmm. And my weaknesses are your skills. So exactly. I don't make, I don't see myself better than you. No. I just know how to adjust my life to my life. I know right. who I am and how I can get to where I need to be. And I felt like school was going to slow me down. It was just plain and simple. And as much as my mom hated it, anybody, I mean, obviously, I, you know, my mom wanted the best for me, wanted of me to course. graduate, wanted all of that. I'm the only one in my, my siblings that didn't graduate. So that's like a knock to me. Did you, know? you go and get your GED? No. You never got your GED? No. I didn't know that. Nothing. Wow. And no. you're like, I think the the part that I want to drive home to is like, Diana is wildly successful. Like as a realtor, I 
So we get updated every time you enter a new contract. Mm -hmm. And Dylan was in the car yesterday and he goes, who has a new listing? Oh, shocker. It's Diana. Right. (laughs) Like we all sit back and watch you and we're like, holy crap, this girl, like she must have more hours in the day. Like (laughs) truly you make an opportunity for yourself everywhere you go, which is something I admire about you. And I think it's something that like the younger generation can benefit from hearing. And also people in our age group, like I just got my license to be a realtor in 2021. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And sure, my, I was a fast track, right? Like things went very quickly for me and God gave me things that I couldn't have made happen for myself. And I obviously understand that. And I think you're in a similar situation. Like there's skills that you have that have grown stronger because of the circumstances that you were in. I always, what do I always say? Need raises ability, right? Mm -hmm. Your need to provide for your family raised your ability to be a saleswoman. And I'm not just talking about houses. You could sell anything. Like you could sell anything. Mm -hmm. And you prove that you sell lashes, you sell, you have a photo booth, (laughs) you sell houses, like they're, you know, hotcakes. Like you, your gift is sales, right? You connect with people. You will find a way to make something happen. Like I've been on, on other end of a transaction from you, that thing would have fallen through without you. And I'm a dang good realtor. Like I say that with confidence. Like I, I am resourceful and I will make little adjustments and things that I need to do with every client. But like, I have never seen someone do it like you. And it's just a testament to what you just said. Like, you know what you're good at, you lean into it and you're not afraid to say that, but you're also humble enough to admit when you made a mistake that set you back 10 paces for sure. So what do you feel like in the early stages of your motherhood and adulthood, like what's something that you're like that set me back that I had to overcome that? I felt like being around what I grew up around my childhood, bringing my family, everything that I was used to. As a young kid, we were around gang violence. Like that was just plain and simple. We we had gangs going around everywhere. Um, so I saw stuff that drilled in my mind that this is how we need to be. We need to be with our ten toes up, making sure that we're protected, that we're good at all times. So I was so focused on that and not necessarily focused on things that could have made me better. But when I had Aaliyah, I'm like, okay, I need to get out of this mindset. Yeah. And it took me a while. It wasn't over day. Aaliyah was already going on two or three years old and I was still ghetto. Like I was still just not the person that was supposed to be. I was young still. And I'm still trying to figure myself out. I was better, for sure, as far as working. I was making Good sure. Good you were only 18 at that point. At that at that point, yes. And then, I, actually, by 18, I already had Davian. So, two so you had kids. two kids under eight, under the age of 18. Yes. So, I had two there. And, you know, again, I'm starting to realize, like, okay, this lifestyle that I've been around all my life is not it. I know what it brings. I know what it does. And I always felt it. I always knew that the people that I grew up around, I never felt that I was better than them. I just felt like, Y'all wanted different things. My story was different, for sure. I felt like my, not only, not my ending, but my future was going to be different. Mm. And whether if it was bad or good, I just felt like I don't want to do what you guys do. Maybe you're at the moment I do, but this is only going to last for so long. And a lot of them, I didn't see that happening. I felt like this was going to be their life. And when I started recognizing that, I'm like, I need to separate myself from this. Yeah. I need to do your what environment I influences you as a person more than anyone recognized. Like for sure. I think that's something that I would encourage anyone who's in your situation or in a situation where they're like, I know that I could be doing more, but the people around me holding you back. Yeah. And that sucks. Like when you're in that mindset, like I've been in I've been in friendships like that. I've been in relationships like that. Exactly. Where I'm like, man, I'm meant for more than this. Mm-hmm. Like I know that God has given me clearer vision for my life and I'm not gonna succeed or achieve those things with these people around me removing yourself from that situation so you removed yourself from the situation you're now a mom of four mm-hmm. right yes what year did you get your real estate license 20 same year as 22. me right two no, no 21 I'm, I'm i'm before i'm after you because you just hit your my three years coming up in june my three years saying that i've only been in real estate three years so is it three years okay then so you hit your two years this year i hit my two years in june of 2023 Okay, so then yes, we're three years together. Yeah, yeah, three years. Okay, so you get your license, and like, what did you expect out of that? So I get my license, and so when we're in class, everybody's kind of thinking, and I hear this all the time. A lot of people are like, "Oh my gosh, you know, I can't wait to get on the field. We're gonna make so much money." People go into real estate thinking this is like fast money. This <laughs> is just like overnight. Jokes on you, kid. Yes, and like I can have the freedom that I want. I don't need to work a nine to five. Like I hear it yeah, all the time. Congratulations, you now work twenty four hours a day, more than I ever thought I would. Yeah, but so 
they, they that was like the misconception like real estate's easy real estate's mm -hmm. this isn't that and so whenever I got out of school I remember when I uh, interviewed with a couple of brokerages they had said the same thing this is not easy money this is not and I would tell them I don't think it is like I'm that one person that doesn't think that this is easy yeah. I kind of I grew up around my dad doing stuff with houses and you know so I'm familiar with it like I said Mexican I think everybody flips houses some kind of way you know <laughs> so I knew the the whole process of it but I knew it wasn't going to be easy my dad's a business owner my brother's a business owner and my mom I mean, we've owned multiple businesses so I know that this is not something that you can just sleep and then have it grow overnight do you feel like you entered in automatically thinking that you Go tell me fire. I know, I know. I thought I did. Uh, do you think you walked into getting your license thinking as a business owner? Uh, I don't even, honestly, I don't feel like I even thought about it that much. I just thought this is what I want to do. And I mean, going back to what I was saying as far as like my dad, my dad kind of instilled in my mind that anything I want, it has to, I have to work hard at it. My dad also instilled in going into a business. Now, I can agree and disagree on this, but I do believe he has a lot to do with what why I am the way I am. But he's like, whatever business you choose, make sure it's a need for somebody. Somebody's going to have to always need oh, it. Oh, I agree with that. Yes. Well, how do you disagree with that? Because I feel like, okay, makeup industry, nobody needs it, but it's so big and it's going to be around. But nobody needs it. So I, I he like, kind of talking about when you were thinking about selling lashes. I wouldn't know. I, I was thinking about because I when I told him a long time ago that I wanted to do makeup, he kind of was like, uh, that's not something somebody needs. Who Who's to say how long that's going to be around? And I'm like, it's been 20 years almost and it's like still around. So. Okay, but in your budget, like if I'm if I'm broke, I'm running to CVS to get mascara. I'm not ordering Charlotte Tilbury. Like exactly. That's that's not the the need. I agree with him because I always will need somewhere to live. Always. Yes. Or I'm live under yes. a bridge. So I that's what I'm saying. So I did get that from him. And so whenever I decided, okay, I want to go real estate, I'm like, okay, I'm doing something my dad said. Like in yeah. my mind, I'm like, okay, my dad says something, and somebody's like you said, someone's always gonna need a house. Mm -hmm. So I felt like, okay, this is the one for me. I don't have to. In the beginning of my life, I wanted to do makeup for whatever reason. I wanted to be a makeup artist. I mean, you do great makeup. You just beat your face uh, by yourself. Now I feel like not as back then. I used to feel like I was good at makeup. Now I'm just kind of like whatever. I'm just whatever. But back then, I'm like, this is what I want to do: makeup, hair. And now I'm like, I'm glad I didn't choose that because I could yeah. not do it. It's exhausting. Yes. And so, um, and no offense to people who do my best friends that make artists. So yeah, how she does so it. I know. I was like, I don't know how you do it, girl, because I'd be. Mm, but she says the same thing about me. I don't know how you do what you do, but uh, going back to where we're cut for what we're cut for. Right. So when my dad told me that choose a career that you know someone's going to always, always need, real estate had always intrigued me, and I'm mm -hmm. like, this is it. This is the, the thing that someone's going to always need. Um, so I came in here, you know, thinking like, this is what I want to do. I go into anything knowing that I'm going to be successful. I don't half ass anything. Like I'm like, I have to be somewhat, even if I do it for a year, as long as I know that whole year I did it, I was successful. Like as long as with lashes, I love that with lashes, I did it for two or three years. Ask anybody in Fort Worth, they would tell you where they were getting their lashes from. I was one of the first lash companies that were on Instagram in Fort Worth area that were going the way they were going. And I That's will amazing. Why'd you stop that? that? Real estate. Real estate. Yes. yes. I got so busy. So many people ask me, why'd you stop this? Was I'm I I got literally so do busy. not have time yes. to do anything other than real estate. And I hate it. And I always said I hate that I neglected it. It was called Zeta. It is called Zeta. It's still there and I'm going to bring it back up when I make time, but um you're gonna pay someone to run it. Yes. That was my boss, plan. Ladies mm -hmm. pay people to do to things do so that they can go work exactly. on to make money. Yeah. So um, mm -hmm. with Zeta, it was a good two, almost three year run. And just thinking back at I, I got lashes and I turned it into where I had almost 2000 followers of women buying lashes. And mm -hmm. I'm talking about consistently consistent. I'm talking about one hundred dollar lashes, not worth one hundred dollars. They were buying one hundred dollars each time. Crazy like purses, sunglasses, everything you could think of. I was putting it on there and my girls they trusted me so much with everything I put out there that they were buying. They were so loyal to me. Go back to that. OK. This is the point about you <clears throat> that I think we're kindred in. Anything that I've ever done, and I've shared it on social media, or I've shared it with my friends, they trust me. Mm -hmm. That's what sets it apart is you could tell them, hey, uh, you know, go do this, go do that, go do that. I have a pyramid scheme. Yeah, I mean, I did it. Like, not a pyramid scheme, but I saw it. Girl, I made good money selling essential oils. Like, those people, what? they're like, send me your cash up. And they're like, okay. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> But, like, kidding. you build a following because people trust you, because mm -hmm. you're authentic and you show up as who you are. They never question, who are we going to get? Exactly. No, it's Diana 100% of the time. And mm -hmm. I feel like we're similar in that. Like, I physically don't know how to not be this person. Like, just Jordan. Like, honest to God, there is just... 
nothing in me that I, I can't be disingenuous. It's physically almost impossible for me. Now, can I like throw a spin on anything? Mm-hmm. Sure, of mm-hmm. course. Like I could dress it up and I can BS with the best of them. Exactly. But through and through, like people that know me know who I am. And I think that that's something that translates over into business. And I think that's something you do so well. It's like your clients, they become like extremely dependent on you. Like for they sure. become like, they're your people. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's made you super successful. And so what would be your advice to an agent that's like just now getting their license and starting out? Well, before we touch on that, I want to say, as you're saying that a lot of my people do trust me and they, anything I do, they're there to support me a hundred percent. But I want to say that my people that I'm considering my people weren't my people, if that makes sense. So like the people that I thought were my people were not the ones supporting me. The people yes. that I have now that I would say my people support me are girls that I never saw a day in oh, my life. Yeah. Girls I never met. Girls that I'm just like, where well, we you talk come about from? this with like new agents. I tell our new agents all the time. Do not be shocked when your brother, cousin, sister, father, mother don't use you as a realtor exactly. because some people don't mix family and business. Like, but what I'm saying is you start a relationship with a client and you dive all, all the way in. in, all the way, all the way. Where in. I make sure they know that I'm there. 24 7 and the thing is they know if I ever mess up if I've ever messed up an order with Zeta if I which was very rare but it was me running multiple packages mm-hmm. I was doing yeah. my own marketing I was doing my own business card everything everything was wow. on me and packaging orders I used to get so many orders and I'm like how my I was working a nine to five at the same time so I was doing it all by myself and so if I ever felt like okay I didn't do this right or whatever here's a discount here's some money back here's Absolutely. a free lunch it was always something so they knew I wasn't just this girl trying to make money. I mean of course I'm trying to make money but I'm also trying yeah. to build a business yeah and I think and what, return clients are the best clients exactly and I feel like what separated myself from a lot of other businesses a lot of other businesses get greedy they don't want to own up to when they feel like they were wrong um, and then also like I said I started to realize who were the ones that were supporting me and I made sure that I put them on a pedestal like Mm -hmm. you are supporting me you're going to get the best of my business absolutely and that would be my advice to anybody in real estate anybody starting a business don't don't be down or get hurt if the person or the people that you grew up with didn't come and ask you for to be there because let me tell you the truth Mm -hmm. they will come around exactly no it takes them a little bit longer i'm Mm -hmm. telling you this like i really believe in this like the people that know you personally oftentimes will be somewhat more hesitant than the people that follow you like Social media is such a beautiful tool now because it connects people that like I'm new in high school, but I don't know them now, but Mm -hmm. we're still talking and we're still catching up on each other's lives because of social media. That is one thing I love about it. Yes. Sometimes it takes the people that are in your closest circle to watch you and make sure that this is something you're sticking with and this is something that you do well before they jump in. They will come around because Mm -hmm. they know that you're good at what you say you are. Like, honestly, that... I've found that too. Like they're like, oh, okay. It now it makes the most sense for me to go with Jordan because she's good at this, mm-hmm. right? It's not just oh, we love her, so we're gonna trust her. It's oh no, we've watched her do X, Y, and Z. Now we're gonna trust her with our business. Like sometimes it is that way, and you can't get your feelings hurt. And that's why you gotta make situations happen for yourself. Yes, for sure. And I think too, not even I think a lot of even when I hear new agents today, they're like, well, I'm not good at real estate. And I don't really even think it's about being good at real estate i don't think it's good at with people exactly it's not good at selling lashes i don't i don't i didn't know that i could sell lashes i didn't know that i could sell house i didn't know i could sell candy it wasn't that i was good at selling candy it was good at keeping business you know helping people achieve something that they didn't know they could achieve Mm -hmm. i know that i'm good at being there i know that i'm good at listening i know i'm good at hearing what people need i don't just here's this buy it you know whatever it's no no i i know what i'm good at and I think that's why people trust me that they're not like, oh, I wonder if she's good at this photo booth thing. They just know that I put my all at everything I do. Yeah, you do. They know that I'm good at sometimes to your detriment. Correct. You one of the things that you and I talk about, we go round and round about this all the time because it's something we both struggle with is rest. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, hello, I just literally started a new adventure. But I think that that's another part of it, too, that I want you to talk about, like the burnout that comes with working. I mean, we work a lot a successful realtor like you're expected to have your phone on you at all hours of the day like there's been times where I've been talking to clients at one in the morning while we're trying to iron out details back in 2021 when it was buck wild Mm -hmm. like I don't think I slept that entire year (laughs) and that's not sustainable that's not the goal for our business but like there is a time and a place in my opinion and I want to hear from you about this but like that everything else kind of gets pushed on hold like when you're starting a business that first year is crucial like that first year you're busting your butt every single day asking for business. Someone asked me, 
some, I think when we were at Century 21, someone would be like, how do you get so many clients? And I'm like, I literally ask for it. Mm-hmm. I ask for people to be exactly. my client. If you need a realtor, please call me, text me. All right, here, we'll put the phone number in the comments. Like, I'm not kidding. Like, I asked but for that call business. me first. No, no, no. Hey. <laughs> but like, truly, that, I think that's what sets a good salesperson and even just a good business owner apart. For it's sure. Like, I believe in myself and I believe that I will serve and honor you and I will pour out every ounce of my energy to make sure that you get what you want and you do the same thing. So, but like, how do you, how do you personally av- avoid the burnout? Because I know how I do it and sometimes it's not healthy. So how do you do it? I'm going to be honest. I don't think I do it. Like, I really think sometimes I feel like I'm burned out. I haven't found my way of separating the two and that's my goal for this year and that's one thing that I need to Good. work on mm-hmm. is figuring out how to separate family relationships friends all of that you know just in the Work business balance, yes yeah. like yesterday you saw me I'm cooking and on the phone and my kids over here asking me like I'm trying to do it all at the same time and it, I don't know how to say no I just all I right. feel like when people need me I need to be there and you know especially when it's clients if this is crucial in order for us to get to the closing I'm picking up that phone and I'm telling my kid I'm I'm over here hi Susan and I'm like snapping and mm-hmm. like you know I'll beat your butt yeah. and I'm over here my kid's looking at me scared but Susan thinks I'm just in the best mood ever Susan thinks right. that I can do it all Susan thinks that sometimes it takes that yes and Susan's really thinking like oh you sound in a good mood I'm like do you only if you knew mm-hmm. but I do struggle with that I struggle with stopping with putting an end putting a period at anything because I just feel like I just I have to keep on going and but I think that's part of your success but it also will be a downfall if I don't know how to get it together it exactly yeah. Yeah. and I agree with that but and, I think that's good like that's what I and on the topic of being real like there is the there's so much glamour behind the hustle and the drive but sometimes it's freaking exhausting like sometimes it's like Dang, my relationships are struggling because I am under contract. Like in July, I'll never forget. I think last July or last June, one of the two, I sold eight houses in the same month. And it was the hardest month of my life because I was managing with all eight of those clients come contracts and and paperwork and all the things. But it also comes, you're going to hear my dog in the background. Sorry about that. (laughs) You also come with the emotions that we're dealing with with eight different clients. And not only am I dealing with the eight clients, I'm dealing with the agent on the other end. Mm-hmm. I'm dealing with the lender. I'm dealing with the insurance. I'm dealing with the title company. Like to the point where you feel needed at every moment of the day. Exactly. And that is not something to to like beautify or make it look beautiful. Sometimes you simply get your ass kicked and that is the reality of that day. Exactly. And <clears throat> but that also is why our clients love us. In a lot of ways, I think. And I agree with that. You mentioned that because I've heard agents. I'm like, well, what is going on with them? I don't know. They're really just the agent just to get the paperwork. And us, I feel like we're so involved with their lives during these 30 days oh or 60, whatever days it it's is like going. It's like a withdrawal after we stop. Exactly. Like, we close and I'm like, I haven't heard what are you them. doing? Like, what? Yes. And I'm sure that they feel the same way about us. But like, and y'all, like, don't get it twisted. We mess up very often. There are times where we let things fall through the cracks. Like, we're human beings. Like, of course. But I think that. But we fix it. We fix it. We always fix it we one way, way or another. Yes. We find a way. And I think we're both pretty honest. I will tell you my bad. Like mm-hmm. I, I, this I missed is not an excuse. Date. Yes. I missed something. Yeah. Yes. And that's part of being a human being. But I think the part of it that I really want people to hear from you is just like, like the, the fact of like need does raise ability. And like if you want something for yourself, like no one is going, especially in real estate. Good God, if I could drive this home. Like. No one is handing you clients. I don't care what brokerage sure. tells you. They're giving you leads. And I own a brokerage. Mm-hmm. And those leads aren't coming in the way that they were in 2021. Exactly. So if you start a real estate business and you think I'm going to be a realtor and my broker is going to give me leads or I'm going to find clients and da 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 Mistake number one. <clears throat> oh, my gosh. Whenever I I always tell people that don't go into business buying leads. No. Thinking you're going to get that's the worst if way to learn. If you can't drum up business on your own and like reach out to the people in your circle and ask the people in your lives for business, like truly, I don't know that this is the the industry for you. And for there's sure. a lot of agents that might disagree with us that have built successful businesses off of leads. Yeah, yeah that's great. That's never going to be the way that I run my business because I want to be a relational realtor over anything. I for want sure. people that use me in the past to come back and say, you have to use Jordan because she is going to do the best job. She's going to pour out every ounce of energy. Right. Mm-hmm. And I think your business is 100% on referrals. and For sure. Media. For sure. There's nothing. I don't pay for leads. I don't, I've don't. No. i never paid for leads. I've also never seen somebody get as many referrals as you. So props <laughs> to you because you're doing something right because your phone never stops ringing. It's lit- it's it's crazy. But yeah. I, again, I feel like, and, it's, and like I said, it's from people 
a lot of people that I had never met and they're like, oh, I'm going to send you my cousin. And but sometimes when you do a good job. It speaks for itself. Exactly. And it's crazy because sometimes some of these people who've sent me people, they haven't even done business with me. Yeah. And I love that. I love that they haven't done it, but they know who I am. They know what I put into my business. Yeah. And they're recommending people to me. So I love that. Um, but yeah, what was our question? I'm about to ask you know, that. Because we're gonna, we can talk about real estate literally all hours all of the day. day. And we do. We do. We talk about it sure. a lot. But that's the, I mean, I think <clears throat> it's beautiful to work with realtors who are different from us too, because we learn from them of like, like we have a realtor on our team who's so creative and mm-hmm. we have so many different beautiful brains on our team and the way that they think. And it's hard sometimes to slow down and implement certain things when your business is just running the way that it's supposed to. Like somebody asked me, oh, have you door knocked or have you cold called? Like I really have never done those things Mm -hmm. because I've been fortunate enough to, I utilize social media heavily. I connect with my people there. I connect with people in person. Like I will ask, I give my business cards out to Target employees like when I go to Target and they ask for something I've given my card out to like probably every single cashier at the Target in Hearst okay Mm -hmm. like that's what we're doing to make it successful but then we're also like what we're trying to do differently I think is really lean into the referral aspect and lean into I want my ability as a realtor to be the reason that someone chooses me for sure and while I agree with that but I feel like Going back to what you're saying, I ha- I am I have been that role to that with door knock. I have been that role. Yeah, you've done it all. I've done it all because going back to where where I came from, I don't have people who are like, let me just buy a house. Mm-hmm. It takes us a lot. Some of us don't even feel like we could buy a house. It takes a lot for us to get to that point. Can to you think talk that. to that? Talk about that. Like, we, I've learned so much about the Hispanic culture through your eyes and through your contracts because, mm-hmm. like. It's a very common thing to like not put their money in the bank. They don't have. They, they have got hella cash, bro. And their mattress and the refrigerator in the walls, buried in the backyard. Baby, they got somewhere. money. Don't be. Don't get it twisted. All Everywhere right? you can think of, and and, and this, that might be painting with a broad brush. And I'm not. I don't want to like no, assume you're anything. But like I've really learned and that it really is it's like a that. challenge for them sometimes because for they'll sure. be like, yeah, we have two hundred grand in cash, but we want to buy a four hundred thousand dollar house. Yes. And the lending aspect is like, well, where do we make sense of this money? And a lot of them are getting paid cash because they're working some cash jobs, but they're making so much and money. They work so hard. Yes, and it's kind of hard. So now they've been in rentals for thirty plus years. There's no way of them buying a house, but. You know, with my lenders that I use, we always figure out a way and they you know, always find a we way. find a way and I won't go into details. Just call me and we'll figure <laughs> it out. But we find a way one yeah. way or another, because that's that's my thing going back to where I came from, you know, and I'm not going to say I grew up super with Hispanics all around me. And, you know, I didn't like we're from here. So, you know, we're a little bit Americanized. We're Chicanos. That's just what yeah. we are. But I my roots, my dad, my dad's from Mexico. So I know, you know, where my people come from. And I I know that I understand that not everybody is getting nine to five with a W two no. and direct deposits. A lot of a lot of Hispanics don't even trust banks. <laughs> like that's just what it is. They are like, I'm not putting my money in the bank. And yeah. I'm like, how do I get through but that? But I think that is so helpful. And I think that that speaks to anybody who's starting a business. Like knowing your target market is the do or die. Exactly. Truly. Like I know that my target market is probably not Spanish speaking clients. Mm-hmm. Like I've referred them to you. I've referred them to other people on our team. Like, listen. I try to speak Spanish and <laughs> I do a decent job, but I she definitely, I get through to the conversation. We would invite her to the carne asada. Hey, I'm She's okay. invited. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, but no, so for me, knowing that I didn't come around a lot of people and for me, it was hard for me to go up to people and say like, here's my card because mm-hmm. I don't look the same. Like for yeah. me being Hispanic, dark hair, tattoos, like I, I used to this, I'm be 100% honest, but I've gotten arrested and they're talking to me. Mm-hmm. They're like, you're getting arrested, but they hear me and they talk to me. They're like, Oh, she's different. How many times I've talked myself out of tickets and not Same. going to jail? No, I haven't gone to jail. Well, yeah, I've had to talk myself a couple of times because they've oh, like they would literally put me in handcuffs and they're like, and I start talking to them and they let me go. But because just because I look a certain way, that's not who I am. Yeah, and, and also we'd like to say that these jail experiences were a long time ago. Yes, so yes, just a disclaimer. She's, she's a changed she's woman. Yes. She's changed, baby. changed woman. Nothing okay, new. but I think that yeah, you're right. Like. It is, you have to know who your people are. You have to know who you're talking to in any business. Like, find the people that, find your ideal client. Find someone that you can relate with. Like, there's many times where people are like, Jordan, why don't you sell luxury properties and those things? Like, it's not that I won't. It's just that, like, I know who my people are. I know Mm -hmm. that I can show up and be who I am because I'm going to show the reality of myself very quickly, right? And that's not going to fit for everybody. For sure. But my people, it will fit for. And, like, that's something that I've always prayed for, like, always over my business. And this is something I would encourage you guys to do is, like, God, bring me the people that you want in my life. Bring me the people that I can serve the best. And he always has. And he always will. And that's why I'm not in that starvation mentality. Like, I, you know, 
I, I'm hungry for it. I want the business. But you're but not starving. I'm not starving because I know that I'll find a way and I know that God will make a way. And I know that my people that are supposed to come to me will come to me. And I, that sounds so woo-woo, but like it really is. Like I really believe that every person that I've gotten to close a transaction with and sell them by a home, that I made a positive impact on their life and vice versa. Like they were meant to come into my life and teach me something and I love believe me that. that. Like, don't you think that? I believe that. I have some some people that I come across. I'm like, you came to me at the most weirdest time. Mm-hmm. They'll say things to me. Right now I'm dealing with a couple of older people. And for whatever reason, at the same time, I'm dealing with people who are about 75 years and older. And ev- every single day, there's one in particular. She's like, honey, just slow down. Enjoy life. My mom would tell me all We're the time. Tattooed on I know. And she's like, my mom would tell me, you're going to get old fast and you're going to regret not slowing down. And she's like, yeah. I'm going to tell you this. So, and, and to me, it was like, it's weird that you're telling me this because I felt like I needed to slow down. Yeah. And I would just get these random people tell me, let me pray for you really mm-hmm. quick. And and it's crazy. And some of them would tell me, I feel like you called me for a reason. And it's just weird. And it's multiple people. God uses that. Yeah. For sure. And so I feel like, that's why for me, this business is more than just making money. This 100%. is more, it's more than, I mean, obviously, like no. I said, we all want to make money, but. You think I've worked this hard just for money? Heck to the no, nurse. There's like, so much to it. There's so much more so much to more. it. So much more. And so going back to that, you know, it's going back to agents and advice. Like I said, like you said, find who your market is. Like I said, I didn't have people that I grew up with that I can just call up and be like, hey, you want to buy a house? Because mm-hmm. it's like, girl, I'll buy. My parents don't yeah. even own a home. So it was kind of hard for me. And so I'd have to do the door knocking. I've got my First, le- my first uh, actual listing was for sale by owner. I did a cold call. My second listing, that. yeah, my second listing was door knocking. So it was door knocking from the for sale by owner that I had just sold. I door knocked on the houses around it after I sold it. Wow. And said, hey, I just sold this house in the corner. If you know anybody, call me. She called me two months later, was going off to Europe, and I sold her house. We sat and talked for two years. I'm talking about I went to stop six in East Fort Worth, if you know where that's at. Yeah. I sat in this lady's house and talked to her for two hours. Now, I mean, it took some, I'm not saying go to stop six and do that. I'm not saying that, but you know, you, you know where you're at. You can yeah. feel it. And I talked with her. We sat down and we became really good friends. And now she's in Europe living her best life. And I got to sell her property. And it was all because I didn't have the resources to call anybody. I had to go find those. And now that and when I wanted to help my people, I didn't know how to help my people at that time. I didn't know what I can and cannot do. I was brand new in the game. Right. I didn't know how to put $200,000 to buy a home and mm-hmm. prove. I didn't know none of that. But now that I know, I'm going back to my community. Like, hey, guess what I learned? Yeah, Let's go I buy your house. Out way, yeah. Exactly. And- well, and that's the other thing that I think is important. Like, you, something I love about you is you're always taking classes. Mm-hmm. You're always learning. You're always doing YouTube, YouTube channel, channel, Like, Yeah, like YouTube <laughs> University, baby. But like, truly, you're you're always trying to better yourself as a realtor. And that's something that's so encouraging to me is that you never feel like you've arrived. Correct. I And God forbid I ever feel that I've arrived. Like, I don't ever want to feel like I know all that there is to know. I want to constantly be learning. First of all, because the real estate market changes daily. For sure. The things that we have to know as a realtor changes daily. But I would say that we're in a pros market. This is something that we love Jared James. Shout out Jared James today. Mm-hmm. Um, and he always talks about, like, you're in a pros market. Like, we're in a pros market. And I do, I look at you as a professional realtor because you're constantly trying to educate yourself how to serve your clients better and how to go back to where you were from and say, hey, I figured out a way to make a difference in my community. And that, I think, is of more value than dollar amount. For sure. For sure. And I think that, like you said, having to constantly figure out a way when you're from the areas that we're from, that's what you're built on, figure out a way. So you see it in my business. You see it. You see it in my business, in my life, anything with my kids. How, sometimes, like I said, I was in points where I didn't even know how to pay bills, but I figured out a way. I was putting stuff on PayPal and for. Oh my God, the girl. story you tell me about how you PayPal and for and for your own business, you'd have a you'd have a. Yes, let me tell you that. Let me break it down cause please, it because it might go over some what? people's heads, and it may help somebody who was in the same Bob situation. Like, so I have my business boutique, which is Zeta. And there was a couple of times where I couldn't pay my rent, whatever it was at that time. I was I was going into real estate and I quit my job. I just did the whatever. And I quit my <laughs> nine to five. And it was probably the craziest idea. And sometimes I tell people, just quit. And I'm like, OK, now everybody can do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah hold but, on. You know, but I would just like, yeah, I did. I just quit. And, you know, by the grace of God, I made it. But uh, there was times where I'm like on thin ice, like my savings are running out and I got there. And so. I had placed an order. I had about $100. Let's say I needed to put it and make it easier. Let's say I needed $400. And I had $50, $100, whatever. I placed an order on Zeta for $400 worth of stuff. And I I did a PayPal for, and it only cost me $100. And I ordered a whole bunch of fake stuff that I obviously was never going to ship to myself. 
I got the payment of four hundred dollars. I don't know if this is legal, but I love it. I mean, I don't know. I don't. I mean, I don't see how it wouldn't. But it's my business. I paid myself. There you go. Yeah. So I um I yeah. So I placed the order of four hundred dollars. Only paid a hundred towards it because I did the PayPal for. And by the time I had the money coming, because I have every two weeks to pay it, I was able to pay it. But I got my four hundred dollars right then and there because I needed it. So You're constantly genius. I'm always finding a way to flip my money. That's the hood in me. You know, we're always trying to figure out how to flip how something. How can I take this hundred and make it a thousand? Ex- exactly. So I'm always trying to figure out how to flip something and that's exactly what I did and I would have to do that and I did it more than once just to get by. Need or, exactly. raises ability. Can we title this episode Need Raises Ability? It, it, okay, because I think I'm, that's huge. I feel like that and I think that if people would get out of their own way and out of their own head and realize like, all right, if I need to provide for my family, I will find a freaking way to do it. Like exactly. that's really where I think like to talk about that starvation mentality, like Dylan and I will never let our children go without. Like, mm-hmm. we will never go without because we literally would work six jobs and have. To like, feed them. when yeah. we got married, Dylan was making, I think, like, $30,000 $30, a year was our combined income. Our monthly expenses were, like, $2,000. Our monthly take-home was $1,800. Ooh. I don't know how we did it, but, mm-hmm. like, we did it. We figured it out. We made it out. Like, there was times where it was like, okay, we are, you know, $500 short. What are we going to do? Like, you figure it out because you have to. Exactly. When you feed her to the fire, you will figure it out. Like, that's why I – and picking your partner is so important, and we'll talk about that in another episode, and Dylan's episode will come out, and y'all will understand why he's my partner. <laughs> but, like, genuinely, when you need something and you have that hustle mentality of, like, I – it's on me. Like, it's on me. Always God is going to provide, and he'll allow you to go through certain things and through certain times where, yeah, you're going to have to put it on the car and pay to buy for it. Exactly. You're going to eat humble pie that maybe you overspent in this area and you didn't manage your money right because mm-hmm. that's a whole other conversation. Like, with a bunch of money comes a lot of responsibility on managing that wealth. And exactly. it's, it's hard. And it's make, really hard. Like, there's months where you can make a lot of money. And there's months say dollar amounts because it's wild. Yes. But like, and there's and months where you can, can make, make nothing. zero. Exactly. And you're like, holy crap. And you have to learn how to stipend that out. And you know what I mean? It's the ride that you ride with real estate and just with owning a business in general. But, man, I could talk about that forever. But I just I can't go back to enough that the need is the ability. And for sure. I've always seen the need and your ability has met that. And I applaud you for that. Yes. So to wrap it up, because we could talk forever and we're running out of time. But um, what is one thing that you in the place that you're in right now, and maybe it's not in business, maybe it's relational or whatever it may be, what would you say to your 15-year-old self who's in that courtyard selling hot Cheetos? Girl, you get them. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. I would. I mean, honestly, I say this all the time, and even with my kids looking at it now, everything that everybody talked crap about when it came to teachers, you talk too much. You don't know how to stay focused. You're always one. Everything that people have knocked me for is everything I'm skilled in now. So I would tell myself, don't get down. Like, don't beat yourself up for everything that somebody's telling you. Oh, why do you do that? Or that's wrong or whatever. All the things that I would get in trouble for are making me successful today. And I think at the time when I was getting in trouble for all the time, like, oh my, and I would try. I would try. Let me not try. Try to be different. Yes. Let me not talk. Let me not. Accepting who you are is, I mean, I had to accept who I was. And I finally did. I'm like, I don't care what they think about me. And I think that's made me who I am. I didn't care who said what about me. I didn't care where I came from. None of that. Even to this day, I always tell people like, yeah, I have a lot of kids. I got a lot of ghetto stuff that happened in my past. And I'll be the first one to tell you, there's nothing you're going to say about me that I won't say about myself. I've beat myself about it before and I picked my chin up and I kept on moving. There's literally nothing you can tell me that's going to hurt my feelings at all. Because I promise you, I have told myself that already. So I had to learn to just move past, move forward, not care what anybody tells me. And just everything that people are seeing are my weaknesses, use them as my strengths. And I will tell you, Everything that they have told me were my weaknesses, what were going to get me in trouble. God used it for your good. Exactly. And all those times when I got that in for talking yeah. too much in class. Oh, oh, that was me. Oh, my God. All the time. She's too bossy. Guess what? You're right. Like I am. And <laughs> I do talk too much. My clients love it. You know, yeah. everybody wants to talk to me. I'm not that quiet kid that won't speak right. to you. You know, like, so- yeah, I'll, I'll walk through Walmart. I'll never forget. I was buying all the stuff for our Christmas party that we're doing for the business. And I had no business being on the phone with you. And we talked for an hour and a half. And I cannot tell you what, what we, we talked, talked about. about. I, I have all no the clue time. what like, we talked about. I don't know half the things that I, I couldn't even tell you right now. If they ask us, well, how was I don't know. Just watch it. I don't know what we <laughs> talked about, girl. I don't even know. Uh, but. Yeah. The thing that I appreciate so much about you is that you're authentic. And when we started this, I knew immediately. I think you were one of the first person people I asked. I think it was my mom. And then I immediately called you. And I was mm-hmm. like, hey, I'm doing this. Will you join in with me? So I really appreciate that. 
you were sharing all the things that, you know, and, and good God, we could talk about more. And I'm sure we'll have a follow up to this episode. I, I was a little nervous because I'm like, how am I going to tell about my ghetto story, my ghetto love oh, we need stories, a, we all need a, that? We need a, a podcast episode that's just you, like the hood, the uh, Tales from the Hood. Tales from the Hood. Tales was, from the Hood. That was supposed to be that's my book two. story. Yeah, that was supposed to be okay, my book. Tales well, then from the Hood. We'll save that. But no, I appreciate that you're honest and that you do come unapologetically, Diana. And I want you to know that. I love you as who you are, and I learn from you all the time, and I think you're one of my most solid friends, and I'm proud of the woman that you are and how far you've come. Thank you. You're well, welcome. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be a part of this. As nervous as I was, like I said, coming from my background, it's kind of hard to be like, hey, you know, everybody from the hood would be like, is she talking to the police? Who's she talking? You know, we say stuff like that. You know, it's just like hood mentality. Don't talk. Don't go on camera. Uh, so I'm like, what do I talk about? What do I say? It's going to be hot against like, me. Hey, let's only talk about legal numbers. I know. But I appreciate you coming on, and I'm sure that we'll have an episode yes, too. So thank you for tuning in, and we love you. Bye. Say bye-bye. Adios. Hey guys, thanks for listening to my mom's podcast, Let's Just Be Real. If you enjoyed today's episode, please subscribe, like, follow, rate, and review so you don't miss any of these honest and amazing stories. For all the behind-the-scenes content, go follow my mom at Jordan Swingle on Instagram. And as always, let's just be real.